Hello and welcome everybody. Fuck. I know I rag on NACS a lot, but UKCS just died. Rest in peace, UKCS. You were alive for about three months, maybe four. We won't forget you. It was a wonderful time. CS was a utopia, but now it's dead. Obviously, I am referring to the fact Smooya, just after Fnatic's 9th to 12th place exit at IM Katowice, has been benched, yes. Minus Smooya, an absolutely classic move in Tier 1 Counter-Strike. Now, I think it's important to kind of go through some of the context of the Smooya time at Fnatic, basically just quickly go through the four months, because it's important to understand exactly what has gone on thus far to really understand the context of this move. Now, we start off uh, with Smooya joining on a three-month trial. Now, that is something interesting to note, I think, from the off. It's not that often that top teams will very implicitly state that it's a trial or it's a trial we're testing things out let's see how it goes obviously smooth has a bit of a history of being a um toxic i don't think there's another word from it toxic influence on teams so it's understandable to some degree but the fact that the organization seem to be kind of hedging their bets from the off makes me a little bit nervous if i'm a player seeing that but Anyway, things go pretty well at the start. As you can see, we got banger numbers all leading up to Fnatic winning that DreamHack Open November. Now, as we can see, it wasn't like an absolute banger field, but there were some pretty good teams there. Mad Lions, actually a pretty good tier two team towards the end of last year. Big, obviously a good team. Forza, pretty decent, even though this was a slightly adjusted Forza uh, from, you know, like prime Forza, but... Anyway, not bad teams here, including Ents. Did they beat Ents in the group? Yeah, they did. So they beat all the other decent teams there. Pretty good result, right? Now, the worrying form kind of starts with IEM Winter. It's a return to land, but let's be perfectly clear, it's not that bad. Yes, the rating isn't amazing, but that's understandable considering they went out of this event in 7th to 8th. But the kills per round is still decent. Deaths per round is a little higher, but the KD is still okay. He's still getting some frags with these orb, all right? And and there's still some impact there. Uh, this is his impact rating from the event. It's not amazing, but it's actually the second highest on Fnatic. Brolan was significantly better, but, you know, Smoo is not absolutely shit in the bed compared to the rest of this team. He, he's done all right. But the form continues to dip, uh, and by the time we kind of get to Katowice, it's pretty clear that Smuya is is in a, a, a slump. Not really any other way you can put it. The team is not doing as well. Still relatively competitive, and the trajectory still seems fine. They made it through the play-in, which is what they were supposed to do. They were not really supposed to make playoffs at this event, so not a disaster, but things are... Let's say stagnating a little bit. The insane performances, both from the team and from Smuya, that kicked off this kind of relationship. Yeah, it, it's it's gone off the boil, let's say. And obviously, uh, it results in this. Uh, before Katowice is even finished, uh, the second Fnatic get knocked out, this report basically comes out. Um, and as I say in an additional tweet, apparently the decision was made even before Fnatic got knocked out of this tournament. Yeah, it's classy. That's classy stuff. That reminds me of uh, somebody I, I know once broke up with someone in the middle of a getaway with that person. They, they were on holiday together and they broke up with them in the middle of it. That's like the equivalent of what Fnatic have done here. They've been like, yeah, I know we're enjoying like a nice uh, holiday on the beach, but you're dumped. Get out. Now, I am going to address uh, how Fnatic have handled this whole situation, but I'll do that towards the end of the video. The first thing I want to look at is talk about performance and potentially, can this move be justified solely on performance? Uh, on the one hand, and in the one set of opinions, you could say yes. Obviously, as a primary AWP, Smuya has not been putting up good numbers recently, and the LAN events, so I am Winter and then the Katowice playing and the Katowice proper, were concerning he was having his struggles on land he was not having a lot of impact with the orb i think the impact in particular is the thing that was concerning you could maybe forgive a an explosive player like smuya for not always being statistically up there with like simple or ziwu for example although ziwu you know was kind of shit at this event so but yeah basically as a primary orper these orpers are, are, are these orpers 
uh, these numbers are probably not good enough. Uh, and this is an angle uh, that Thorin, Duncan Thorin Shields, kind of agrees with, um, is that just as a primary orper, his um numbers were not good enough. I think it's a little bit harsh to saying he isn't good enough to win with Fnatic. I think this was a slump, really. Um, if you discount IM Winter, which I probably would, it was the tournament that ended the previous year. They got knocked out with two losses to Gambit. I'm not going to read too much into that. I think... Yeah, Fnatic's year had started a little bit shakily, but I think if you're talking in terms of sheer performance, Smuya probably gets more time, right? He's shown such insane potential. The lineup had hit such amazing heights when he first joined the team. I don't think after one month or two months into the new year where you're kind of struggling to recapture that, you immediately go, ah, oh, yeah, whole thing's fucked. Start to get bang, blow it up. I don't know. If that is, and it's solely performance-based, then... Again, we'll talk about how Fnatic could deal with it, but yeah, it's just kind of fucked, really. It's not, it's not great. Uh, just as a point of comparison, um, this isn't to do the reductionist thing of just saying, right, who was the worst performing player on the team? It's their fault. But just to put some context on it, these are Brolan's numbers. Brolan has actually individually still been performing pretty well, even in the kind of slump period. He basically carried Fnatic through that play-in uh, and was still pretty good at the main event. Um, and yeah, just in general, his numbers have, have been pretty good ever since Smuya joined. Smu Brolan's numbers have been relatively consistent for Fnatic throughout his kind of time. Even when Fnatic are not doing that great, he is usually doing okay. So... Nothing really wrong with Brolan. Mezzi's form, definitely a little bit more concerning. Definitely has taken a little bit more of a hit. Uh, this Katowice and this Fun Spark both were, were poor. Were like pretty poor from Mezzi. Uh, just not really fragging to the level you would expect. And even struggling in some senses as a sight anchor, which I think is one of his most consistent and most potent roles, is Mezzi is an incredible sight anchor. And he's not quite been having the same success in that role in particular. And that has like been a little bit concerning for me. So definitely Mezzi's form is also part of the reason for this Fnatic slump. I wouldn't solely put it on Smooja's shoulders. However, Mezzi's form is a little bit more forgivable considering I think Brolan is supposed to be the kind of main rifle star of this team. And when you've got Crims as well, kind of filling that rifle role, you don't always need to bang if you're Mezzi. And then Crims, yeah, had some shit events, uh, had some pretty good ones, but in... Oh, God, what have I done? Fuck. I've ruined the whole fucking thing. It's all right. We got it back. But yeah, Crims has basically been Mr. Stable and Consistent, largely. Uh, obviously, his fun spot was pretty terrible for him. We're ignoring this because it was two maps, whatever. Basically, my point here is Smuya probably was, on balance, the worst performing member of the team, and that isn't really acceptable from your primary author. On the flip side, it was only a couple of months. I think if this is solely a performance thing, Smuya probably gets some more time, which would suggest it might have a little bit more to do with out-of-game stuff. I'm just going to show you uh, a little bit about what I mean on this out-of-game stuff. I'm just going to play you this clip through. He's, he wasn't connected, I think. Maybe not. This bot there. Can't tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Those people are so weird in my team. Now, I understand to some degree that what Brolan said at the end of that video there is obviously a joke. However, I think that little clip kind of shows you a little bit about what Smuya is like as a teammate. I think he's very loud. I think he's very abrasive. I think he deals with his nervous energy by releasing it in that way. Lots of jokes, lots of screaming, lots of shouting. And that's not always going to mesh with a lot of people, particularly when you watched Fnatic play. It felt like all four of the other players were so much more reserved than Smuya, so much quieter. I'm not sure Smuya was necessarily meshing as a personality with the rest of the team. And honestly, I suspect that if anything, this is actually going to be the main issue. I think Smuya would have had to have been continuing to bang out the way he was at the start of his time on Fnatic. Otherwise, I think, I think the benching is basically excused by his poor performances but i don't think they're the main reason i've got to be honest with you i really don't and there are a couple of tweets from smooya that i think potentially emphasize my point and reinforce it right so here we have it the uh the rat king himself uh his his personal twitter um let's have a look 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 here we go 
a lot of things best to leave at this. Try my hardest uh, to come out of the player lake to become a much better teammate, which led to horrible in-game performances. Not right mix of people, I suppose. Worked for a while on skill alone. Right there, immediately already insinuating that there were issues with personalities and behind the scenes. Not the right mix of people. Tried to become a much better teammate, which led to horrible in-game performances. It seems like already the clash of personalities was maybe an issue before the break. Smoo, you tried to rectify it during the break. Felt like his personal performance suffered and you're done. You're done out here. If you're trying to become a better teammate and it ruins your personal performances, like it's just you're you're ne now neither. You're now neither a good fragger or a good teammate and you're just fucked. Like it, you're gone. Goodbye. See you later, mate. You know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Obviously, again, um, huge believer top teams can't work if they don't like each other in game, outside of game. Again, just, just further confirming, uh, I think, the point. Um, that, yeah, personal issues, chemistry issues, personality clashes, I think were the main problem for this roster. What I will say is also looking at some of the comms um, or listening to some of the comms from the Fnatic games. Um, he also seemed like actually he had good comms mid during the round. Like it seemed like he was good at communicating information, communicated the right stuff um, with the right level of urgency. And seemed like he was quite an encouraging teammate as well. Like, good in terms of positivity, keeping the attitude up from, from some of the comms clips we saw. So, I'm not trying to say Smuya is a complete travesty outside a game and he's going to ruin your team. Not at all. I think he just needs to find the right set of personalities for him. And I think Smuya can be a great teammate. I, I, it just seems like this roster was so reserved and so quiet. It was not the roster to stick somebody like Smuya in. Now, this is um, another clip I wanted to show you. This is from HLTV's uh, interview. Shout out, Striker. Beautiful man. Let, let's just roll the clip. Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to try to reel it in a bit. I'm going to try, you know, play for the team. Go first for this guy on this round. Prime example, if we have five Glocks, full Antico, Mirage, rushing out Palace, I have top spawn. I'm going to hit a quick 360 around the pillar so I don't get first kill there. <laughs> like, I, I'm that kind of guy. Sure. And I threw it all out the window, and now my confidence is just... Whew. So I'm going to try to go back to being like full bait mode and just be confident again. Right. Okay. Obvious problems with what he said there. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot to unpack here. So, in some sense, not an issue to say you're a bit of a selfish player as a primary AWPer. I think that's fine. You're supposed to be fragging. You're supposed to be getting a lot of value out of a very expensive gun. I'm okay with that. I think the problem here is this whole, I tried to reel it in. It made me play like shit. Almost seeming to suggest that so by being more of a team player, you can't have good stats, which is a little bit worrying. If you're a top team looking at some of you thinking, should we pick this guy up? The guy who says he can't have good stats without baiting and being a bit of a crap teammate i don't know again you could talk about maybe extrapolating a bit much from what smoothie was saying is but the problem is that by doing this in an interview and by putting it out there you're leaving it out there for the world to interpret so people are going to do what i'm doing here and interpret stuff from what he says and try and build a picture of who he is as a character because this is what we have to go on this is a fucking problem go back to full bait mode and get confident again do not ever fucking say that you are going to go into pro games and bait your teammates for stats. That's literally what you fucking said there. You're going to get confidence back by baiting your teammates in pro games. Dude, come on, man. I'm a smoothie supporter, right? Like I say, this is just super, it's just super dumb. It's just super dumb to say stuff like this. And I will show you exactly why it's dumb to say stuff like this. I literally have the perfect tweet to illustrate why this is a stupid thing to say. So Maui Snake, obviously a well-liked, well-respected analyst within the scene, did some work on the Katowice broadcast, and weirdest of all that he thought the solution was to bait more. Already taking issue with the thing you've said in the interview. Now, sorry Smuya, I kind of believe this, that you often speak before thinking, and that you let your emotions and your kind of energy talk before you've had a chance to filter it and, and think through exactly what you're saying. But this was actually in your defense. So if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but this was actually it is meant to be said in your defense. But look, this is the problem, man. People are now watching your games, expecting you to be baiting, expecting you to have low impact. You're digging your own grave here, pal. Now, on the one side, I am all for a player 
actually saying stuff in interviews that is interesting and relevant and worth listening to because so many of the interviews that we get in CSGO, I'm looking at you, Astralis players. They're just fucking dull. They're so boring. There's, they say nothing of interest or no or intrigue. They literally say, we, we work hard and so we get more rounds than them and then we win the game. <sighs> Fuck, man. I seriously, I, 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 the only reason I watch and listen to interviews during the broadcast is because A, sometimes a friend of mine is doing them. So if Banks is on the interviews, I'll watch his interviews. You know, he's a friend of mine. I like Banks a lot. You know, I'll support my guy. But the other reason is just because I'm a fucking writer and journalist in the scene. So I have to stay up to date. I have to watch these interviews on the off chance that somebody says something that's worth my time. 90% of the time, no. And I I almost didn't want to include this part in the video. I didn't want to criticize Smooya's interview because I really, really rate Smooya in, in those terms. Like he says what's on his mind. He actually says stuff that's interesting. He gives you insight into what it's like to be a pro player, what's going on behind the scenes. And basically he's just a fascinating watch whenever he starts talking about shit that's going on, Smooya. Like he, he always has something interesting to say and I will always read, watch, whatever, a Smooya interview because he's bound to say something interesting. Often also says something a little bit dumb, but you know, fucking, you got to take the rough with this move. The other thing I just want to really quickly point on here, um, and this, this might be a bit of an extrapolation on my part, which is why I kind of say this as like a, you know, little, little part on the off. Um, it, this kind of is a bit of like a simplistic view on the game is almost like I have to bait to get stats. I'm either getting good stats or I'm getting bad stats. It seems like a little bit of a simplistic view on the game when like you need to analyze the game from the kind of point of view of your role as an AWPer. Stats to some extent don't matter as long as you're having impact and you're doing your job within the game. I feel like maybe this isn't necessarily representative of his like the way he looks at Counter-Strike. But to me, it did seem a little bit like you've got a bit of a simple view on what like what Counter-Strike is and how it works, right? If you're just kind of looking at it as like good stats, bad stats, like we win game because I get 28 frags, we lose game because I get 18 frags. It's not that simple of a game, Counter-Strike. Yes, fragging is important. And I think fragging is probably especially important if you're a primary AWPer. However, like I say, it just seems a bit reductionist, a bit, a bit simple. And not with a one. Now, the final um, points I'm going to make, uh, and I'll just... All I'm going to say is, it's fucked up to search for an AWPer mid-event when I'm still playing. That's all I'm going to say. And I, when I find out from someone else that's not in Fnatic, that's fucked up. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to You're play right, an Steve. event. Like, You're right, buddy. Knowing that your team's searching for fucking AWPers while I'm, while I'm preparing for G2 the next day, like, it's... Yep. <laughs> that's right. fucked up, but, uh, yeah... 100% great. Apart from that, it Fnatic's handling of this situation has been a fucking farce. This is some bedroom org shit and is frankly embarrassing from one of the biggest organizations in the world. First up, this, this is a fucking disaster, right? This is an absolute disaster. A player finding out mid-event that you are seeking to replace him. Like, what, what fucking nonsense has gone on there? Like, how, how, like, what bullshit are you doing? Did you think you could just go out and start talking to people and somehow that wouldn't get to him? Why did you think it was even a good idea to go looking for AWPers mid-tournament? Like, like, are you literally just writing off Katowice? You're like, yeah, fuck it. We'll just sack that tournament. Screw it. Like, we don't like Smoothie. We don't want him on the team anymore. Just, I, like, I can't even. And then in the end... You just bring up Regali from the academy team anyway. Did you did you need to talk to anyone if you were just going to bring Regali up? You could have even gone for the idea of like, okay, we know we're going to remove Smuya, right? Katavice is going on, but we already know we're going to remove Smuya. We chill the fuck out. We get to the end of the tournament, and then we say, Smuya, you benched Regali up to the first team to fill in until we find another Orpa. Why not do it that way round? Like, this does seem super bedroom orgy. It, it, it seems really fucking poorly handled, to be honest. The vacuum of information. Let, let's look at Fnatic's statement on this, actually. Let's, let's look at Fnatic's. 
Now, I understand on the one hand, you don't want to air all your dirty laundry. On the other hand, leaving this little information onto the reasons, currently not the right fit. That's literally all they've said. Um, obviously, that's PR speak. Obviously, that doesn't give us any information. I'm not really big on this esports org thing of just like, yeah, we'll just fucking not address anything we don't like to, we think it's uncomfortable. We'll just, we'll just fucking leave a complete vacuum of info. Fuck off, I'm trying to make me buy shit. I've lost my train of thought now. Jesus Christ! If you weren't pissing me off already for now, you piss me off more now. Yeah, so I'm just not a big fan of this PR approach that a lot of esports orgs takes where they're like, we'll just leave a vacuum of information for the community to instead speculate and people can just put whatever they want out there as this reason, that reason or the other and we have no control over the narrative. Why you would want to do that as an organisation, I don't know. And just in general, from start to finish, it seems like this whole smoothie thing was handled pretty fucking poorly by Fnatic. Um... You know, they're not fabled for being, like, the best managed org or anything like that. So it doesn't super surprise me, but still, it, it it's it's pretty disappointing. It's a little bit bedroom orgy, this whole Smooya found out in the middle of the tournament you were going to replace him. Like, like, come on, that's fucking playground shit, man. Like, that's not a professional esports organization. That's not how you should be run. That's not how you should be operating. And if... There's some external factor that's led to this leaking and you did it super professionally and there's nothing better you could have done. You need to fucking figure out how Smooya found out in the middle of an event and like put a stop to that because that's there. Yeah, like I say, it's just so fucking laughable and amateurish like sort it out. That is it from me, guys, on the Smooya situation. Uh, I hope he finds another team soon. I think he's a very talented player. I think he's probably the most skilled player that the UK has to offer right now. And I would love to see him back on a team doing what he does best. I hope Regali uh, does well for Fnatic. He's obviously a young player, highly touted. I wonder if it's maybe a little bit early in his development. It's not as if the Fnatic Academy team was really doing anything at their tier of play they weren't really impressing at all yes regali stats were okay but i don't know i have my doubts about an orpa who was posting solid if not like torsi level numbers at the tier the tier that fanatic academy are playing at and it's not as if they were having much success as a team i don't know that doesn't scream to me that regali is necessarily gonna be a huge success but hold my hands up and say haven't watched enough of him to know how good he actually is. And I hope he does well. I like this Fnatic squad even without Smuya. Still got the UK representation of Alex and Mezzi on there. I like Crimson Brolan as well as players. And I just hope that that five does well. I hope everyone comes out of this okay and, you know, gets to progress within the scene and get to where they want to. Um, but really, like, this whole thing's been a bit of a shit show. Um, and, yeah, not the best look for Fnatic, I don't think. You know the drill, like, comment, favourite, fucking subscribe. I've probably made half of those things up. You probably can't do them anymore on YouTube because I'm a boomer. And if you didn't like it, I'm going to go full bait mode to get my confidence back after you crushed it.